Greetings and welcome to Chapters 8's Lesson 8.2, A Single Population Mean Using Students' T-Distribution. First of all, let's talk about what a student's T distribution is. There's some properties that are unlike a normal distribution or a uh, binomial distribution. It's a different type of distribution, very similar to the normal curve, but it's different. The graph looks like a normal curve, but pretty much the distribution is, um, the mean curve, the distribution is zero, and the distribution is symmetric around zero. In that term, it's almost like our Z curve. So Z is a mean of zero, and each standard deviation is one. So measured in one for our Z, our T is symmetric around zero, but its standard deviation will fluctuate. It's not going to always be one. The two student's t distribution has more probability in its tails than a normal distribution. It's spread out more. So if you think about the normal curve, it's kind of wider at its little tails. It just has thicker tails and a shorter center. The exact shape of a t distribution depends on the degrees of freedom. In other words, n minus 1, n being our number of values. As the degree of freedom increases, the graph changes. It becomes more like a normal distribution. Most of the time, we use t-distribution when our n-value is less than 30. So it has a small n-value. The underlying population, individual observation, is assumed to be normally distributed with an unknown population mean and an unknown population deviation. If we have an unknown mean, but a known standard deviation for our population, generally we will use a normal distribution and do a z-score. When our population mean is unknown and our population standard deviation is unknown, then we will use this t-score. Instead of a z-score, we'll use a t-score. You've seen a z-table before, and we've used a z-table in the past, but for the student's t-distribution, we're going to use a t-table. In the first column, list the degree of freedom. Degree of freedom, remember, is n minus 1. So if we had a set of data that was 20, then our degree of freedom would be 19, and we'd only be focusing on the row corresponding with 19. The top row is the cumulative probability. So t at 50, t at 75, t at 80, t at 85, and it continues on to t at 9.999 or something like that. So that's the cumulative probability. Then we have one tail. So if our distribution was like a less than or a greater than, then it would be one tail. If it's equal to, then it's two tails. We're actually going to focus on the last, uh, the last row of this table, which really tells us our confidence level. So you could use the cumulative probability, that those headers, but the easier is to go and look at the confidence level down at the bottom. So if my confidence was 95% and my degree of freedom was 19, then my corresponding T-score would be 2.09. Three, the confidence interval for a student's t distribution isn't calculated far too differently than what we've calculated in the previous lesson. So let's take a look at an example and we'll work through it. Suppose we do a study of acupuncture to determine how effective it is in relieving pain. We measure sensory rates for 15 subjects with the results given. Let's use sample data con to construct 95% confidence interval for the mean sensory rate for the population, assuming it's normal, from which we took the data. 
So keep in mind that we only have 15 subjects that we're studying. We were not given the population mean, nor were we given the population standard deviation. Because of that, this is going to use a student's T distribution. So we do have the raw data, 8.6, 9.4, and so on. The first step we want to do is calculate the sample mean, the sample standard deviation, and we want to identify the confidence level. So throwing these values into a calculator, adding them up and dividing by 15, we get that X bar equals 8.2267. And calculating the standard deviation is 1.6722. Now, I just threw my data into the TI-84 and let it calculate the mean and standard deviation. Our confidence level is 95, so 0 0.95. Now, second step. We need to find our t-value using a t-table. To use the t-table, I need two things. I need the confidence and I need the degree of freedom. Degree of freedom equals n minus 1. So 15 minus 1 is 14. And our confidence level is 0 0.95. And I could do the alpha portion of it, but I'm actually going to look at my table and use the confidence at level of 95. It's just easier to do that. Grabbing my handy dandy T table, I'm looking at 95% confidence interval. So 95%, I need that column. And then my degree of freedom is 14. So where that intersects, 2.145. That's going to be my T score. Okay, we have everything we need to calculate our EBM. So our EBM will be our T score times our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So really the only two things that are different here is instead of a z, we're using a t, and instead of a sigma for the population standard deviation, we're using our sample standard deviation. Plugging our three values in, we get 2.145 times 1.6722 divided by the square root of 15. So our error is 0 0.9261. Now our fourth step is to calculate our actual confidence interval. So here the math hasn't changed. It's still X bar minus the EBM. So our X bar, X bar minus EBM and X bar plus EBM. So our X bar 8.2267 minus our EBM of 0 0.9261. We get the low boundary of 7.3006. For our high boundary, we add the two values together and we get 9.1528. So our confidence interval is 7.30 to 9.15, just rounding to two decimal places. Our final step is to interpret what this means. We estimate with 95% confidence that the true population mean sensory rate is between 7.30 and 9.15. Using the TI-84 Plus to construct a confidence interval for T distribution is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to actually plug in some data into a list. So I'm going to go to Stat, Edit My Lists, and in List 1 I'm going to put all of my data. Now I know it's boring so you don't need to watch me do this, but I'm going to key in my data. Now that my data is in my list, I just want to double check to make sure that I have all my values. And it looks like I have all 20 of them. So I'm going to go to Stats and go to Tests. So very similar to a Z test, we're going to do a T test. And it is a T interval. So very similar to a Z interval, I'm going to do a T interval. So 8. Now I do have data. I'm not using statistics. I'm using data. So my list is in L1. The frequency is 1. But my confidence level, I want a 90% confidence. So 0 
and I'm going to calculate it. My interval, 117.41 to 137.49, and that is with a 90% confidence level. It also will calculate our X bar and our standard deviation of our sample, and our N is 20. But the cool part about the calculator is we can just put in our data and it will do the rest of the calculations for us. If we did have data already, if we did know our X bar, and if we did know our standard deviation, we could just plug it into this T interval and it would calculate it. But generally, for a small number of values like this, in being 20. More than likely you'll be given the data and you'll have to key it into the list. So that's it. That's how to calculate a T interval using the TI-84+. Till next time, be seeing you. You've reached the end of this lesson.